Or where, at which value of theta does the max value occur? It's not pi. So think about which equation we're looking at. We're looking at sine. When I think on the unit circle, sine is equal to the y value. And so where does my y value reach a maximum? Yes, yes, where sine of 3 theta equals 1, but what's the theta? Where does it equal 1? You're right, 1 is the max. This is the max. Pi over 2. You guys don't remember back to the, again, I'll go back to that unit circle rotation. Sine is the y value. So where is my y value maximized? Well, when I go up the highest which is here when I've rotated pi over 2. Another way to think about it is, think about your sine wave. Sine wave started at the origin, right? Then they've reached their max at pi over 2. Then at pi, they're back at 0. 3 pi over 2 is the minimum. 2 pi, back to 0. Again, any one of those could give you your answer that the theta, or really in this case, the 3 theta needs to be pi over 2. When we say theta... When I was saying theta before, I was talking about if there had been no change in the period, yeah. if it was a normal sine graph. So this value, when this value is at pi over 2, that's where I reach my max. So how could I find where this value is pi over 2? I could set them equal and say 3 theta equals pi over 2. And then we solve... For theta, so divide by 3, which means I multiply by one third. And so when theta equals pi over 6, I'll have a max value. Now, here is the unique thing whenever we have a period change, like we have here. We're only looking on the interval from 0 to pi. So in its normal rotation, pi over 2 would be my answer. But because this rotation is happening three times as quickly, there's going to be another point at which we reach our max. So think about, so anyways, let's go back to this. Think about the normal sign. Sine reaches its max at pi over 2. When would it reach its max again? At 5 pi over 2. On its second trip around the circle, it's going to reach that max again. So set that second time it reaches its max. To also be equal to 3 theta. And then you'll see what I mean. If I solve this one, divide by 3, or multiply by 1 third, I get theta equals, this is 5 pi over 6. Is that between 0 and pi? So this one's also a solution. At this point, you might could figure out where the next one's going to occur, the next max. Where is it going to be? Ten. Not 10. Zero. It's not 11. Nine. Maybe it's 9. Oh. Okay. Oh, the next four, max five. would occur at 9 pi over 6. Is that between 0 and 5? No. So I don't have to list that one. Okay. How did you find the 9 pi over 6? 
because there was a common difference of four pi over six between each one. I went from one pi over six to five pi over six. The next one should be at nine pi over six. Anything else here? Now, what is the minimum value of R? What's the lowest value? <coughs> I think you said it, but I coughed right over it. Negative five. How do you know? Negative A. Okay, that's fine. Min value is negative A. Or again, that same explanation as before. The minimum value of a sine wave is negative one. So if I plugged in negative one for sine of three theta, I would get an output of negative five. So either way you want to explain that. There's your how do you know. They said when sine of 3 theta equals negative 1, R has its most negative value. Whatever. At which value of theta does this minimum value occur? So the normal, the normal sine graph reaches its minimum here at negative one. Well, you you got it right, but you like skip steps. But so I was just we well, normally can't skip steps in here. People get lost. Okay, so the normal rotation here is three pi over two. That gives me the minimum value. But this time the period has been changed by three theta. So. The minimum will occur whenever 3 theta equals 3 pi over 2. Divide by 3, which means I'm multiplying by 1 third. And so I get theta equals, you can cross reduce. That's going to be, you said 3 pi over 6. I'm going to write the reduce form of that. Could it reach its minimum value again? Maybe. So how would I find it? When does when does sine normally reach its minimum value again? It would be at. Uh, It reaches its first minimum value at 3 pi over 2. So when would it reach its min value again? Um, so 6 pi over 2 after this. You mean 3 pi? Oh, yeah. Not quite right. Um, 9 pi over 2. You mean pi over 2? Okay, here we go. Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. Okay? Remember, you can add 2 pi. Oh, yeah, I was going the long way around. 2 pi. 2 pi is the same thing as 1 pi. I digress. Okay, so... Um, These are my, these are, I, I love these at the end of the year. These are my realization lessons. Like I should have, I shouldn't have ever been talking at the same level I've been talking at this whole time. We don't know how to go from three power two to seven power two, but that's okay. We're good. We're doing good. We're, we're making it. We're making it. We're there. We're good. Okay. So seven pi over two needs to be equal to three pi. Why did I write it backwards this time? I don't know. Divide by 3, multiply by a third. And so this gives me theta equals 7 pi over 6. Is that between 0 and pi? No, so I don't care about that. So there's only one min value. Yeah, this makes sense because how many petals were there? 
three. So it reaches its max value at those petals twice, and it reaches its min value once to give me those three petals. Anyways, <clears throat> maybe we understand that. Um, go to go to four. For which values of theta is f of theta zero? So we're thinking about we're drawing petals. Petals are going to they're sine petals, so they start here. Never. It's not never. Okay. So these petals, these petals start here. They go out. They come back. They get zero again. Then out and back. Then out and back. So it's going to reach zero. I'll give you time to think about it. Hello? Hey. Yes, you can. Lily. Sine and zero, we could think about it as rotations along the unit circle. Sine is the y value. Where's the y value zero? Here and here, which is at zero and at pi. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to say we need three theta to be zero, or we need three theta to be pi. So it's going to be where theta equals zero, where theta equals pi over three. Are these going to be the only two? It's all of them between zero and pi. So there could be more because of the period change, right? Because this is three, so it went away. It's three theta, two means it's happening two. two pi over three. And then <coughs> which is? Pi. Uh huh. Pi. So. Wait, it's just, it's just pi. Just pi. Yeah. There you go. So there's four times it reaches zero. And you think about it, if I'm drawing three petals, this is sine. So sine does not start at the max value of the petal. Sine starts at zero. So if I'm drawing petals, I'm starting here. There's one, two, three, four. Right? There should be four times it reaches zero to draw those three petals. And so again, just like we did before, you could either see the pattern from zero to pi over three, to two pi over three, to three pi over three. Or if you didn't see the pattern, you could go, when's the next time the graph gets to zero? That would be at two pi, right? You see, I'm just, I'm doing it a different way. I get theta equals two pi over three. And then when's the next time the graph gets to pi? That would be at three pi. I could do 3 pi divided by 3, which is pi. All these are just different ways to wrap your mind around what's going on. I'm not wrapping my mind. Okay, good. You're doing a good job then. No, I'm not. Oh, I mean, you're not. Yeah, would you help me? I don't, uh -huh. I don't understand this. Song. Which part? The, so the petals start at the origin. For sign. Because it starts 
the origin and then it just looped back around. Is it back to the origin. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand it. Which um You don't understand where I'm getting this value, or you don't understand that it's going back through the origin? I understand that it's going to the origin. Oh, four times? Yeah. Okay. I get that. But you don't know where I get this value yeah. from. Back to our... Go back to beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. Unit circle. Unit circle. We discovered that cosine equals the x value, sine equals the y value. Mm -hmm. So because this graph is a sine graph, yeah. then on the unit circle, I'm thinking about y values. The y values of the unit circle. So if I'm looking for where sine is zero, I'm really looking at where is the y zero. So on the, the x-axis is where my y value is zero. So this is a y value of one, negative one, this is y value of zero. So how much did I rotate to get to this point, a y value of zero? None. None. That's where I got that from. Where else could I rotate to to get there? Um, pi. Pi. That's where I got that one from. And then that is for a normal yeah. sine graph. But this equation is 3 theta, yeah. which means it's happening three times as quickly. Which means then I'm, I'm having to check more rotations to get there. So where's the next time I would normally reach y of 0? 2 pi. That's where I got this one from. And then when's the next time I would normally reach there? 3 pi. Right? Because we're going from 0 to pi to 2 pi to 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. And so I took every one of them and I said, I want to know where 3 theta equals 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Okay. And then I solved each one algebraically get theta by itself to figure out what I'm actually plugging in. So I divide them all by three. Okay. Three is zero. Divide by three. Divide by three. Two pi over three and divide this by three. That's where I get pi. That's where I get my four from. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Anything else on this? Okay, so let's graph it. Um, we can graph it just from knowing where we're at zero, where did our maxes occur. So looking here, when theta is zero, so right here, I should have a radius of zero, which again makes sense. We're starting here at the center. Then it reached a max value at... Pi over 6. So what was the max value? It's 5. So at pi over 6, I should be out at 5. Which means, again, I'm not going to be able to draw this very well. I'm going to be something like this, right? Between 0 and pi over 6. The first pedal is being drawn out to that max value. And then when does it come back to zero? It comes back to zero at pi over three. And pi over three is right here. Right? Is everybody following what I'm doing here? So then when I get back to that point on my rotation, I should be finishing that pedal. So now then I'm at pi over 3. So then where's my next point come from? 
Just look at the points. I have 5 pi over 6. That occurs here. So I'm really looking at where am I at when I go to pi over 2. So at pi over 2, I'm not at 0. At pi over 2, I reached my min value, which is at negative 5. So at pi over 2, I should be at negative 5, which is going towards the negative y-axis. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And so if I, if I want to know the exact correct order to draw this, think about it. The next place I'm really at is right here. But if I'm going to have a negative radius, that's going to put me right here. You see how that's 180 degrees away? I'm going the opposite way. So when I draw this pedal, I'm going to be right here on this side first, reaching the max, and then coming back because when I get to this value, which is 4 pi over 6 or 2 pi over 3, where should I be at at 2 pi over 3? I should be back at 0, right? This is where I reach 0, was at 2 pi over 3. So I'm working back to 0, and I'm here on my rotation. Now the next place I'm going to rotate to is here, which is 5 pi over 6. Where should I get to at 5 pi over 6? 5 pi over 6, I'm back to positive 5. So it's going to reach 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And so I'm rotating from here to the pedal. And then I'm coming back because at pi, I should be at 0. And so right here at pi, I'm back at 0. Any questions about what we did there? Just using theta and whether my radius was positive or negative to graph that. So now complete the table to indicate whether the radius was positive or negative on each interval and whether that radius was increasing or decreasing. So first, it wants me to look between 0 and pi over 6. So between 0 and pi over 6, which from here to here, was the radius positive or negative? Positive, because it's actually in the right position, right? We're right here with that rotation. So the R is positive. Was R increasing or decreasing? Increasing, right? It started at 0, and it ends at 5. So it was positive and increasing. What about between pi over 6 and pi over 3, which is right here? Is the R positive or negative? Still positive. Is R increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. We're going back to 0. Now, between pi over 3 and pi over 2, was R positive or negative? R is negative here, right? We're going in the opposite direction. So the R value is negative. Is it increasing or decreasing? What is R getting closer to? R started where? At 0. What's R going to? So is that increasing or decreasing? To go from 0 to negative 5, it is decreasing. So while your absolute value of your radius is getting bigger, that's why the radius is growing, it's just in the wrong direction. So it's still technically decreasing at that point. Now between pi over 2 and 2 pi over 3, is my R positive or negative? Negative. Is it increasing or decreasing? It's getting closer to zero, right? So it would be increasing there. And then between 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 6, is R positive or negative? Increasing or decreasing? Increasing. And then between 5 pi over 6 and pi, positive and decreasing. So if you think about it, the radius started off at zero. The radius grew to be five. It then went back to being 
zero, and then it decreased all the way to negative five. It went back up to zero, it increased to five, and then started decreasing to zero. So you kind of see how that follows along. I'm increasing to five, then I decrease to zero, I decrease to negative five, increase to zero, increase to five, decrease to zero. So what happens when it gets to five right here, this is what we consider a max value. When it got all the way to negative five, this is a min value. Back up to five would be another max value. So explain how you could use the table to identify the angles at which the max and min values occur. So pretend like you didn't have these intervals. Say you just had this table. How could you know where a max value occurs? Okay, so max... Yeah, I knew what you are saying. Max occurs where graph switches from increasing to decreasing. What about the min? Where does the min occur? From decreasing to increasing. Now you see where it's switched, there's a min. Here where it's switched from increasing to decreasing, we hit our max. Increasing to decreasing, we hit our max. Right? That's just like any graph. That's the way all of those occur. So the max occurs where we switch from increasing to decreasing. I would say the min occurs where graph switches from decreasing to increasing, right? You're just literally switching. Eight, Jared says that whenever the radius is increasing, the distance between f of theta and the origin is increasing. Do you agree? Why or why not? Um, Jared, wrong. For real? Is that FR? Okay. Um, yeah. Why is he wrong? Because or just give me, give me a, give me a place where he is wrong. So between pi over 2 and 2 pi over 3, r was increasing. But it was getting closer to the origin, right? We're getting closer to 0. So talk about it on x intervals. Don't ever talk about it with outputs. Never, 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 never. Because it's, it's a function. Each input has exactly one output. So that's why we talk about them that way. Um, I actually think they do a bad job explaining theirs. Um, Jared wrong for real. I would say between pi over 2 and 2 pi over 3. Or you could be very official and write it this way. Between pi over 2 and 2 pi over 3, R is increasing... but getting closer to r equals 0 or the origin. So that's called a counterexample. I gave him one example that goes against what he thought was always true. Questions there? 
9, find the average rate of change. What's, what uh, signals are going off in your head when you see average rate of change? The slope formula. So we're going to be using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now let's get in the habit of writing this down because on your free response AP test, you're going to have an average rate of change formula. And you can't get it correct unless you write a difference quotient. That's what this is. This is a difference quotient. Okay, so let's get in the habit of writing that down every time we see a rock. Um, getting ready for that exam. Like I said, all those kind of uh, specifics, like what I'm explaining to you, we're going to go over those soon. I'm just letting you know at this point. So in this case, my Y2, like I'm my, or let's just look at my X's. My X2 is pi over 6. Minus my x1 is 0. So I need to find f of pi over 6 minus f of 0. So what was the function evaluating to at pi over 6? That was right here. At pi over 6, I was at 5 minus. What was the function evaluating to at 0? What was the output? 0. You see where I'm getting those from? The outputs, the actual radius, 5 and 0 over pi over 6 minus 0. So this simplifies to be 5 over pi over 6, which just looks awful to me. So I would have to write this as 5 over 1 multiplied by the reciprocal, 6 over pi, which is 30 over pi is your average rate of change. Write a sentence interpreting your answer. Oh, gosh. Well, because you have to understand what the numbers are doing. Between 0 and pi over 6, the R changes at an average rate of 30 over pi per radian. You probably don't have to be that specific, but...